that's not good. There's a shadow right across my mouth. Okay, uh... okay stand here. <laughs> okay, so uh, my name is Nina, and uh, I'm gonna try to do a well. Leslie Bruce is the stand-up routine. I um, I was really just thrilled today so much. Thank you to Curtis Melody and Chris Matthews for just making this an amazing day for me. Um, uh, I, I found Chris on YouTube. Uh, I was looking for the Melissa Etheridge, Katie Lang, If You Can Sleep While I Drive, because that happened in 1994, uh, early 90s, and that channel wasn't available in Canada. And it's sort of funny to me that it didn't occur to me until last year to even look for it, because, you know, almost everything's online these days. And so when I was looking for that song, that's actually how I found Chris. And her version of it was just so beautiful that I, you know, I ended up fanning on her page on YouTube and getting and you know meeting her on Facebook. And about a month ago, I started a fan club for her. And um, I haven't been doing as much with it as the other fan clubs um, that I run, partly because I've been so shy to talk to her. I mean, it's it's silly. Um, you know, she's on the east coast of uh, America, where she's uh, in a regional folk singing thing. And today. I shared an article from my local arts paper, the Georgia Strait, and suggested to her and Curtis um, that they come to Vancouver next year for the Folk Festival. And Curtis I actually met on Facebook, and he was in the Caribbean, and now he's currently in the UK um, where he's recording. And, you know, so for both of them on the same day to, um, you know, when I said I'm sharing an event thing with them to help promote them, for them to come back and say, well, you know, you could perform there too, because that's what's this, I mean, they've heard me sing on my little videos, and, um, anyways, um, uh, wow, I just, <laughs> this is probably the first, you know, truly genuine smile that, um, that I can say, uh, it, it connects to the emotions are what I'm talking about, and, you know, this is all just about that. And, um, anyways, that's uh, encouraged me to, um, I just thought of a joke, and I was going to, uh, to do it, and when I started to forget it, because I got so excited and carried away with that, um, vanished kind of stuff, and, um, Curtis actually has a, has a group on, uh, on Facebook, Earthlinks, and, uh, we all share music, and he's been such a wonderful support, and he was actually, um, I got harassed by a couple of men in the office, and I dealt with it. And I just let Curtis know that it had happened. And he actually made a statement in the group about behavior, and it really just meant a lot to me. And oh, I had this earlier. I was going to catch um, tears to add to the quest of tears. Um. Because I'm just really so grateful to have met him. Because he's the first person who defended me. And, uh... <sighs> these are... These are definitely going in the jar anyways. Um, that I have in the freezer. Um, wow. Well, all comedy comes from pain. So, um... That's, that's actually the essential truth of comedy. Uh, this morning I was uh, chatting on Facebook with my friend Stephanie, who lives in uh, Washington, uh, where she had run for, I can't remember, Senator Congress. I've known her going back to the 1990s when we used to hang out at the um, uh, BC Science Fiction Fan Association Social Gathering, FRED, which uh, stands for, and I'm going to do the polite version, Forget Reality and Joy Drinking. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, that's how geeky I am. Um, <laughs> anyways, um, I had a we, Stephanie and I were talking this morning, and uh, you know, because I'm 45, she's a little bit older than me, and we were talking about the trials and tribulations of being middle-aged, which is, you know, partly thematic. From uh, I, I just actually think I saw a rat, and I need to close the door into my house because I don't want to deal with that. Okay, I'm 
actually not entirely sure what I saw because um, when I am stressed out, I see uh, shapes, and the shapes are specifically spiders and specifically rats. Um, however, uh, I know that they are stress related and uh, they occur within a particular range of my vision and they always walk along the plane of the floor or wall that I'm looking at and um, they have a cartoon aspect of them so I know that they are warning signs of uh, stress and uh, stress related headaches uh, and what I saw actually did not move like that it moved more um, God I feel like um, that episode of How I Met Your Mother with the the rat cockroach thing. <laughs> Anyways, that's not what I was gonna do. I was gonna do a joke, and um, so I was talking. The context of the jokes. So I was talking to my friend Stephanie, and we were comparing notes about the things about being middle aged because it's part of my agoraphobic uh, life workshop and and my recovery process to transform the mental pain uh, into physical pain and then deal with the physicality uh, that's structurally skeletally. Uh, yeah, now I'm getting all intellectual because I'm a little bit freaked out about what the heck that was running over there. Um, trying not to be distracted, and there's that bouncy thing is uh, next door is going. Anyways, um, I don't think I can do the joke as a delivery thing now. Um, this has been a little bit more emotional than I was expecting to do, so I might do a second video or just upload this one as a raw recovery uh, insight thing. Um, and also as part of the Quest of Tears, because um, that was, actually that's, this is going up, because that's, um, uh, optics. Um, you know, it's, it's like, uh, you know, talking to someone who's, you know, we're sharing the same complaints back and forth. Um, she's diabetic, I've actually reversed diabetes, um, and You know, so to get that validation was really good, and then I was just sort of chuckling, you know, about how, you know, when we were friends as young women versus friends now, and uh, she was talking about coming up, if we can figure out where the social gathering is, just to show up to blow everybody away, and um, uh, I was just thinking in my head that, uh, you know, it's, when you, when you can get acknowledgement of, you know, the real, concrete, measurable concerns, you know, and you start thinking about the emotional stuff, you start to hear that whiny emo teenager in your head, you know, it's like we all have the inner child, um, you know, that needs to have fun and needs to be adored and have attention, but, you know, there's, um, life has been more complex, and, and I, I'm starting to really get an appreciation of that from my roommate, um, ten-year-old daughter, and, you know, seeing, um, what I mean, I haven't kept up with pop culture for five years for grown-ups. I mean, I'm totally stunned by what's going on with kids. I mean, the last kid thing I read was Harry Potter, and, you know, I was really glad how the, the reading level of that book series improved over the course. Um, you know, it's uh, actually the first series of books where I prefer the movies um, for the most part, um, except for... Uh, the Prisoner of Azkaban, and it's really too bad because they only needed like 45 more seconds to really knock that one out of the park. And um, I did really prefer the uh, Order of the Phoenix movie because the book was way too long, and I like to call it Sweet Valley Hogwarts because it was like, okay, the whole thing is keep away from Harry, and Harry actually really sort of showed how Harry wasn't the problem solver for most of the other book stuff. Um, Oh, that's because I'm warm and now I'm babbling and trying to come to a common pop culture reference as a grounding thing and also as a wind up and wind down as part of my... Um, I'm sort of always trying to think about topics for blogs and because, um, you know, I'm a writer um, uh, reviewing books and what I'm really hoping to do next for my writer series blogs is actually uh, I'm trying to get comfortable with reading and...